If you believe that, would you stand to your feet? Amen. If better is one day in the house of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. How many of you found that to be true? Amen. Amen. We want to honor our graduates tonight and re- congratulate them. I think we ought to give them a hand. Amen. For their accomplishments. And we're thankful for all of them. I especially want to honor Sister Cindy. Now, it's one thing to go to school when your mom and dad's making you get up and go to school. It's another thing to get up and go to school when you've got two kids at home and a husband. And yet she was able to persevere through it all. And we honor you tonight, Sister Cindy. And all of our graduates, we thank you for being here. And we do want to honor you after service with our token of appreciation. We have something to give you here before service is over. Just for a few moments, and I will not be lengthy tonight in my remarks, but I would like to direct your attention to the book of Daniel chapter 6. Daniel the 6th chapter. And I want to read verse number 10. Daniel chapter 6 and verse number 10. And the word of the Lord reads like this. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled down, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks to God or gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Reading that again, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he he did aforetime and everybody said amen I want you to underscore two words toward Jerusalem everybody say it with me toward Jerusalem amen let's pray the Lord will help us have a mind that's open and ready to receive the word of God and God will calm our children tonight in Jesus name right now Lord strengthen us to do the work of the ministry and I pray that you will touch the hearts of people that are in this building right now calm every heart Lord let our spirit be drawn together right now in the name of Jesus we pray and everybody said amen God bless you turn to somebody and smile and give them a high five and tell them you are awesome amen you are awesome praise God my remarks tonight are especially directed toward all of us not just our graduates we're very proud of their accomplishments and I do want to remind those that have graduated from high school that it was a commencement it was not an end it was a beginning amen many more things to look forward to and I challenge you that uh, you will accept that and move forward go to college get a degree and become the best that God will help you to be and everybody said amen there was a doctor one time traveling through the back countries the area in which he practiced he was going out to find a patient in a small town When he came to a split in the road on one of the back country lanes, the road sign at the fork points both directions for the same town. Kind of curious as to what he should do, he saw a farmer nearby and he asked him, does it matter 
which road I take to get to town. The farmer simply replied, not to me it doesn't. Not to me it doesn't. It may not matter to a lot of people where you're headed tonight, but it ought to matter to you. And it ought to matter to all of us that our direction is taking us to a better place or to a worse place. It may not be a matter to some to be of concern to any of them, but it ought to be a matter of concern to us, the direction in which we travel tonight. And I want to talk to you for a few moments about that journey of life, the steps that we can take to ensure that we finish that journey in the right place. That is so very important that we finish in the right place. We love our GPS device and they're wonderful in helping us navigate. But one thing I have learned about GPS devices, it only works when you know where you're going. I heard someone say the other day that they were kind of sick of hearing this philosophy that it doesn't matter which road you take, all roads lead to heaven. They said if you really believe that philosophy, when you leave church tonight, just take any road and see if it takes you home. If that philosophy really works, it doesn't matter how you go about it, it doesn't matter which way you go, that you're all going to wind up in the same place, then when you leave church tonight, You just take any road and see if it takes you home. You're going to take the road that's going to lead you to your house. You may have a detour here or there, but your ultimate goal is to get home. I don't know of anybody that wants to spend the night on the road tonight. And so a GPS device is only good if you know where you're going. But if you know where you're going, and you're able to plug it in, it will help navigate you to that place. And we all know how important direction is. Daniel found himself in a very hostile environment in Babylon. There were great pressures upon this young man and all of Israel who had been taken into captivity to conform to the standard of that country. He was pressured to conform to all of the uh, religious philosophies of that day. And yet the scripture says that he purposed in his heart to stand. In the first chapter we find that when he is confronted with the choice, he had already made the choice. He was not waiting for an event to happen. He had already determined the direction of his life before he ever left Israel before he was ever transported to Babylon he had already made up his mind where he was going and what he was going to do and so now he found himself in a hostile environment and the voice of Babylon was no doubt very loud and the pressures were great but Jerusalem that oh it seemed so far away was still in his heart And it was still in his mind. We learn a lot from Daniel. We learn, first of all, that hardships do not develop character. It only reveals character. And every person in this building is going to face their share of hardships. Every one of us have our disappointments. There is no life that is lived without its challenges. And for what we see unfold on the pages of our text we understand that there was a predated decision something that was done prior to this time that helped keep him and establish him in his going the story is told of a sea captain who was a great Christian man and he was given to much prayer one time when a great storm was blowing someone came to the wheelhouse where the captain was And in that great storm, the man shouted out to the captain, Why aren't you praying? The captain's response was, I prayed, son, during the calm. And when the storm comes, I sail my ship. That's the way life ought to be lived. 
Trusting God in the tough times comes naturally when we have kept our relationship with Him in the good times. And before Daniel was ever transplanted to Babylon, he had evidently made up his mind who he was, who he belonged to, and where he was going. And so when he gets in this position and he gets in this predicament of pressure and he feels the urge to give in and, and uh, they, they want him to eat the king's meat and he refuses and, and all of the things that went with his trial, he had made up his mind the direction that he was going and he never deviated from it no matter what kind of hardship came. He had already developed a character that was rooted deep in the will of God and the purpose of God for his life and nothing would deter him. Because of that, he stuck to what was right no matter the opposition. When you make the decisions in the right time and in the right place, it doesn't matter what kind of opposition comes against you. You can stand those pressures and you can withstand the evils of the hour. Each one of us have our troubles that are unique to us and to us alone. But we've got to stick to what is right if we are going to win in this thing called life. He wanted to be connected, I believe, to something that would last. And somehow Daniel knew that Babylon would not last. It would not last forever. And so he hooked himself up with what was going to last. And he stood. He stood in the midst of pressure. He stood against the odds. And he lived for his God in an environment that was far worse than many of us experience in our own personal life. And I believe there is one word that defines his success. I believe there is one word that defines his life story. I believe you will find in that one word his dedication. You will find in that one word his love and his passion. It was the decision he had made in his life. And all of those decisions that were made in his life were based upon the influence of this one word. That in spite of Darius's proclamation, in spite of the order of the king, Daniel made his prayer toward his God beside the window that opened toward Jerusalem. When he opened that window toward Jerusalem, Daniel was opening himself toward all that he knew about God and all that he believed that was true in God. And when he chose for his favorite view that window toward Jerusalem, he was reaching and pointing himself toward the highest and the best that he could reach. The very best in life for him was in Jerusalem. No matter the present circumstance, no matter the present environment, there was something else that had his attention. And tonight, that is what I have come to challenge not only our graduates, but every person in this building. That the success or failure of our life is determined by which way we open ourselves and who we open ourselves up to. There are many things in life that you can open yourself to, but not all of them are conducive to your spiritual well-being. Not all of them will bring you to that desired haven. And there may be some that don't care where you wind up, but this preacher does. And I believe you ought to care where you wind up. You ought to have enough concern about your destiny that you don't leave it to chance and you don't just leave it to some other time. But say, you know what, Lord? I want Jerusalem before me. I want all that you represent to be the view that I choose above everything else. I want to open myself toward God. I want to open myself toward all that is good, all that is blessed, all that is sacred, all that is holy, all that is pure, all that will enrich, all that will bring me to a better place. That's what I want to open myself to. Amen. So Daniel made his choice. He chose his view of life. And that view was toward Jerusalem. We all get that chance. 
the view in which we will look at life, we all get that choice. We're free to choose what we open up to and who we open up to. And we can shut out the views that displease us. But I will tell you that there are views of life that will enfeeble your faith. And there are, there are directions that you can open yourself up to that will rob holy things of their sacredness. And there are things that you will open up yourself to that will drag your ideals and your dreams down into the mire. Make sure you open yourself in the right direction. Choose the view that will bring the best into your life. Choose the view that will bring you closest to God, closest to His purpose. Choose the view that will connect you to something that is eternal, something that is beyond this moment. For I am here to tell you that this moment that we live in is not all there is to it. And if you are only living for right now, you are going to be sadly disappointed in that day to come. I'm telling you there's another day coming. And there is an eternity that waits every one of us. And we choose the direction in which we will go. There are times, no doubt, that we lose our direction. We may even lose our bearings. But I have learned this much about God. If my window is open toward Him, He always helps steer me back home. He steers me back in the right direction. One of the beautiful sights that you can see when you go up in an airplane is the serpentine path of the river as it makes its way to the ocean. Somebody might say of that river, it flows south. But I can take you to places where that river flows north because of the contour of the land. But we don't define that river by that one turn. We define that river by its overall course. And the overall course is toward the sea. I am here to say to somebody, though we stumble at moments in our life and we find ourselves in places that we don't need to be, there ought to be something within us that will get hold of us and turn us back in the right direction. And when that window is open toward Jerusalem, that was the secret to death. Daniel's success. That was why he was able to stand. That was why he could endure the pressure because he had opened himself up to God and he knew that him and God could tackle any situation. There's nothing that you face that you and God cannot make your way through. No doubt he did not want the displeasure of the king and I certainly know he didn't want the lion's den but he made a choice. And that choice was Jerusalem. And that's where his allegiance would be. And that's the direction that set the tone for his life. And that was the flow of the direction of his heart. Not toward Babylon, but toward God. And toward the things of God. And because he pointed his heart that way, he was able to withstand the pressures. He was able to make the hard choices. He was able to turn away from what was was appealing for the moment because he was able to see something beyond the present. We are shut out to the views that displease God. We open ourselves to the things that make him happy. I'm telling you that when you open yourself to God, that opening up to him will help you outlast every trial. It'll outlast every storm. It will help you weather every situation when you open yourself toward Him. Which direction are you pointed tonight? And to where are you going? We are all traveling somewhere and we're all going to wind up in some place. Somewhere. Somewhere. Daniel said, I've already made up my mind where I want to end up. I want to be close to Him. Whether I'm in Babylon or whether I'm in Jerusalem, my windows are open toward God. I want what's best for my life. I want what God has for my life. I want His touch upon my life. I want His help upon my life. Oh, I challenge somebody here tonight that may be wondering which way you ought to go. 
open the window toward him, you will never, never regret it. And the Bible said he opened his window toward Jerusalem as he had at a four times. He did not wait until the storm broke to make his mind up. He made it up ahead of time. And because he made it up ahead of time, when the storm came and the pressure was on, he was able to stand. Amen. It does matter where you're going. It matters where you go from this service. It matters for these graduates where they go from this school experience. It matters to all of us where we end up in eternity. Amen. Let's stand together. I want to open myself toward the blessings of God. I want to open myself toward what is best. Amen. What is best. There's a lot of things that will try to attract you. A lot of things that will try to distract you. But you've got to keep your focus on what is really important. 